I'm going to show you how to do the rehab for the lower limbs. So foot, ankle, knee, calf muscles, Achilles tendon, quadriceps, uh, hip, uh, lower back, all of those are really influenced by uh, uh, functional exercises. So it's really important that you know how to do a squat, how you know you do, how you do a split squat, how you do a lunge, very, very important exercises to do. And before you do any of these, it's really important that you look at the videos on how to prepare your muscles. So how to massage them first, what to stretch, what not to stretch, how, how far to do them. Uh, so using balls, using rollers, using foam rollers, really important. So try to look at that first. Now, we're gonna start with the, the rehab of the foot and uh, calf muscles. So to do that, uh, first thing is to be able to work on the proprioce proprioception of your ankle, your balance, your equilibrium, uh, and to really contract your foot well. So don't forget how to use your toes. The toes are there for a reason. You need to contract, you need to stabilize. You can't just put all your weight on the outside or the inside or on your heel. You, the toes need to contract a little, okay, or, or a lot in some cases. So you don't want your foot to lean in, you want it to contract and stabilize. Now, to do that, uh, you need to put all your weight on your, uh, your right leg first, I mean your left leg afterwards for sure, uh, and you can use the wall to stabilize so that you don't go from side to side. And what happens here is you're working on all of uh, your receptors so that they can stabilize your, your leg and now you're going to lose your balance. Now when that, get, that's, that gets easier, you can do it with your eyes closed. So when you close your eyes, well, you lose all of the feedback from your eyes, so it becomes a lot more difficult. And what you want to do is use the wall if you need to. And you can also do, you can move, you can bend your knee a bit, you can do certain things, as long as your ankle isn't moving too much. If your ankle is moving too much, it means uh, that you need to stabilize with the wall or you're not ready to do it with your eyes closed also. Okay, so just make sure that you're not, uh, you're not going to injure yourself um, by putting, uh, letting your ankle move too much. Right? So very important for, in the, for ankle injuries, but also Achilles tendon and uh, foot injuries, uh, bladder fasciitis. So next thing that's really important to, to learn how to do, uh, well, actually, let's stay with the foot. So with the foot, you also have uh, uh, calf muscle exercises. So we're going to use the little bench here. And you put both your feet uh, on the bench. And the point is, so that you're... Uh, um, not to stretch them really, and the point is just so that your, your heel doesn't touch the floor. So let's say my left ankle is injured, so I'm going to go up on, uh, let's say the right ankle is injured, so I'm going to go up on the left one, push up, and then uh, use the wall as a, just to keep my, my balance, and then put my weight on the right one to come down slowly in three to four seconds, really working on the eccentric part. Now if it's too injured to do that, I just go up with the left and I come down with both. And I vary the, the, the pressure I put on the right foot depending on how much it can take without it hurting. So same thing as usual, 10 to 15. And if it's easy to get to 15, well you can make it harder and harder. You can even actually use some weight also in your hands if it gets easier. So if both are injured uh, and it's just too painful to do them, well you're not ready to do that exercise. But if not, you can use something to kind of help you use the wall really to help you go up and then come down really, really slowly uh, to help uh, working on both at the same time, okay? So, next thing is the squat. The squat is extremely important, and uh, we seem, really don't seem to understand how important it is. Uh, people seem to think that you, can't, you shouldn't use your back to lift things, and that is a very, very wrong idea, okay? The back needs to contract, and to be able to contract your back, uh, well, to be able to contract your legs, you need to use your back, okay? So uh, the mistake people think is that you need to stay vertical, and that's not true. If you want to pick up something and you want to stay vertical, it's kind of impossible to do without wrecking all, of, all of your other joints. So this is the mistake. People tend to uh, crush their knees, crush their ankles, make their knee crack, try to stay straight, but my back isn't contracted. It's just straight, but it's round. It's kind of like soft. I need to be able to do a real squat where I'm bringing my pelvis out, contracting my abs, contracting my back, using these muscles to go down and come back up. Now, if you can't, you don't have the flexibility to do this, you need to work on it a lot. And if you don't have the endurance, you should not be picking things up, okay? And sadly, that's most of the population doesn't know how to do that motion properly. And even sometimes, which is really weird, is people work out, they do squats, and they don't realize that they have to use that exercise when you're actually picking something up during the day. So it, it is a very, very important exercise, okay? 
Now, to learn how to do squat, um, an easy way is using a chair. So you start with the chair a bit higher up, and basically you want to put your weight, you want to stay straight, you want to lean a bit forward, so your hip is bending, not your back, your hip is bending. So you're going a bit forward, your weight is going on your legs, and you're using, you're contracting your abs, and you're uh, contracting your lower backs, and you're bringing in your stomach so that you stabilize, and you go up. Right? Now if that's too hard, you use your hands to help you. And when it gets easier, you don't use your hands, and when it gets easier, you do barely put pressure on uh, on the seat, okay? The easier that gets, the more you wanna lower the seat so that you're working even lower. And when that gets easier, you can even use, let's say, a few books. You put them close to the wall here, and you go down. And if your lower back starts to round out, that means it's too low, okay? So it needs to stay straight, bent, but straight, okay? So you're going up, and you're contracting, and you're coming down, okay? Very, very, very important. Now, in, to me, maybe an even easier way to learn this and gradual way to learn this is using the wall. So you're against the wall, you advance about a foot, and you go down and you touch your glutes to the wall. All right, so you just learn that the actual real moment is bent, mo movement is bending your knees and sticking out your glutes so it touches the wall. And the lower you can go without your lower back rounding out, so the lower the lower you can go without doing that, well then, <laughs> the better you're doing the motion. Now, basic squ squat <laughs> means that you don't want your knees to, 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 to go past your toes too much, and you don't want your knees to go in. They can go out a bit, that's not a problem. <laughs> the important part is you want them to stay following your feet. If you open more your legs and your, your feet are open, you want them to follow your feet, you don't want to come in, okay? So basically, going as low as you can, keeping, um, your back straight but slightly angled towards the front. All right, so using the wall is a great way to do it. If you lose your balance, you can just line, like, lean against the wall and just go back straight. You can use your hands, you can help yourself. So, next really, really functional and important exercise uh, is the lunge. Now, for the lunge, basically, you're going pretty far apart here. Your toes are, uh, your, your heel is lifting off uh, the floor in the back, and you're going down and Everything needs to bend 90 degrees. Now, the dangerous part about lunges is people tend to keep the knees st straight in the back and put all the weight in the front and just destroy your knee forward. And what happens is you're putting too much pressure on uh, the tendons in your knee and you're, you can really injure your knee if you don't bend the back knee. Because a real lunge, your weight is on your back knee and your front knee at the same time. You can do it gradually, you can go less, less far, you don't have to go that far, and eventually you don't touch the floor and you go up and down. So you're basically bending both to 90 degrees. If it goes slightly forward, it's not a problem as long as it's not going too far forward and you're putting pressure on your knee. So lunge is a great exercise. It helps with your balance, your whole body. So it's really, really a good exercise to learn how to do. And it's really very functional. So if you need to go down and pick up something and you just, you just use your knee, even lean on your knee to, to help yourself and you grab what you need to grab and you can go back up and you just go up straight, right? So your back is straight, your legs are contracting. Everything is, 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 is safe. Don't hesitate to, don't forget to change leg and not always use the, on the left leg in front or the right leg in front. Now, for the ultimate exercise that's really, really important in sports, it's really important in day-to-day -day life too, but even more, like, it's not what we use the, the most, but it's the split squat. Now, the split squat is a great, 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 great way to um, do rehab for your, your, your legs. Now, what a split squat is, is it's like half a squat. So it's only, all your weight's on the front leg and you're going down. Your knee might pass your toes a little bit and you're coming back up. So all the weight is on, on the front leg. Now, that's a really important exercise to do and a good way to stabilize your joints in different direction is to uh, do it really from side to side in the front. What I mean is, imagine you have a, a Y um, on the floor, okay? So the stem is in front of you, so it's upside down. So the stem is in front of you, and two arms are in the back of you, okay? So basically, you're on your right leg here, and you're going down, and you're bringing your left leg as far as you can on the back here, so on one of the, wing, on one of the, the wings. And then you're going down on the other side. Now I have the wall, but it's been in the way, I'll be more in the middle. And then with the leg in front. So you're stabilizing, coming up and down, and you're doing that slowly, 
what that does is it fluctuates your weight from one side to the other, and it makes everything stabilize with your weight in completely different directions. So you don't want your knee to play. If it starts moving a lot, you're gonna injure your knee. So the point is to be able to do it and stay stable. Once you can do that, you lower the risk of injury enormously, okay? So very important, it's a great exercise to do, but it's not the first one you do, okay? You, you go from equilibrium on one leg, you do squats, you learn how to do squats, you learn how to do lunges properly, and when you can do a squat properly, and you can do a lunge properly, well then you can start doing split squats and you can change the angle, and it's really, really important. So for athletes, it's a must uh, learn exercise, and when you do that exercise and you can do it properly, you, you, the chances of your knee giving out when you don't want it to are really low. So that's really important. I mean, some people, I'm sure, I've, I've looked at this before where you're on your own, you're landing, you're from jumping, or you're, you're changing direction, and your knee gives out. Now that's not normal. If it gives out, it's because your knee's not strong enough, or you're not massaging enough, preparing it enough, it just gives out like that. You need to do those exercises, okay? So don't forget uh, about, about these. Uh, the next step for athletes is learning how to jump, how to, how to land, uh, and your reflex when you do those explosive exercises, and they can bring a lot to, to people. It gives a lot, it's really important to, to, to eventually be able to do those. But your reflex needs to be to land in a squat. Okay, you need to go out. If you stay straight like that, you're going to injure everything. Okay, really, really important to learn to your reflex needs to be in one in doubt squat. <laughs> All right, on both legs. If you're on one weight, we'll try to shuffle and put your weight on both legs. All right, so really, really, really important. Your reflex in any situation should be able to be able to do a squat. Okay. Uh, same thing with split squats, you, you need to be able to stabilize and land. If you're landing, you just stick out your bum and you're careful and you're contracting everything and if, it's, if it gives out, at least everything's bent and you just land, okay? You just, let's just have a fall. Right, so really, really, really important, okay? So I hope this helped, uh, this helped a lot and um, maybe one day I'll talk about more about jumping and everything else, all right? So 